Um, so she can tow quite a bit. Is it as much as a Ram 2500 with the Cummins? No, it is not, but we will talk about why that's probably not the engine's fault. So stick around and we will get into it. What is going on today, guys? My name's Alex. Welcome back to the channel. We are back with part two with this beautiful 2022 Chevy 2500 LTZ Duramax. Today, we're gonna dive all up under this truck. We're gonna talk about things like driveline ratio, suspension specs, transmission specs, and all kinds of fun stuff that I feel like a lot of reviews don't necessarily touch on. Um, you know, it's cool to know about the different heated and cooled seat options as well as the infotainment options, but in terms of a pickup truck, understanding what is mechanically underneath the truck and what separates this truck from other trucks mechanically is very important. So that's what I want to focus on today. If you guys are more curious about the Duramax itself in part one of this little mini series, I focused exclusively on the Duramax engine, gave you guys my thoughts on it as a licensed diesel mechanic, as well as just generally the pros and cons on the engine. So if you're interested in that, I'll put a link down below in the description. But anyways, let's get underneath this truck and uh, see what the heck's going on. All right, so maybe I lied. We'll talk a little bit about the engine. This is the 6.6 liter Duramax turbo diesel engine. This is the L5P edition, which came out in 2017. It is boasting 445 horsepower as well as 900 and 10 pound feet of torque. So she is no slouch. This truck with this engine is capable of towing 18,500 pounds or thereabouts. Um, so she can tow quite a bit. Is it as much as a Ram 2500 with the Cummins? No, it is not, but we will talk about why that's probably not the engine's fault. All right, so right underneath the engine, we have our first major piece of componentry, GM's front axle. Now, it's a little bit low under here, guys, but bear with me. So you guys can see the front diff right there. And the big difference between this truck and a Ford and my Ram is the fact that it is a non-solid front axle or it's an independent front suspension setup. So you guys can see you got your lower control arm right there as well as your upper control arm right there. And you have your CV axle right there instead of having a solid front axle. So that is the first big thing about these Chevy heavy duty trucks. So for years now, GM and Chevy have gone with an um, independent front suspension setup, meaning that you're not gonna get a solid front axle in their heavy duty lineups. Now, there's a couple pros to this. Number one is the uh, ride quality. Independent front suspension is going to have a much better ride quality than a solid front axle. That's number one. Number two is there is less unsprung weight. So a solid front axle weighs quite a bit and it is below the suspension, mean, it, meaning it is unsprung weight. Um, and that is going to affect obviously the handling and a lot of other things. Now the third benefit is steering and handling. An independent front suspension system is going to have some better handling and it's gonna steer much more predictably. Now on the contrary of the pros of an independent front suspension are the negatives. Now. Um, the first thing is, is that an independent front suspension system typically is just not as strong as a solid front axle. Now, I know GM um, is going to claim up and down that their independent front suspension system is just as strong as a solid front axle. And depending on what test they do, that may be true. But in reality, in the real world, you can probably abuse a solid front axle a lot more than you can an independent front suspension system. Now, with an independent front suspension system, obviously we're going to have cv axles in here and that's those things right there now cv axles they're great they're going to work 99 percent of the time but they can also break and with a solid front end here a solid front axle you're going to have u-joints that connect to the hubs much stronger units than a cv axle so Unfortunately, what can happen is these CV axles, when they get loaded up, they can actually just snap or break. The other thing is that you can see there's boots on these CV axles. Those boots, they can tear without you knowing and dirt and debris can get in there and it's just going to uh, prematurely fail the CV joint. So just to compare the Chevy independent front suspension, I thought I would get underneath my power wagon. This has a solid front axle and I just wanna show you guys the difference and why I like this system better for a heavy duty truck. So as you guys can see, this is a solid front axle here. It's one cast piece of metal 
the axles actually spin inside of it. So this is where all the magic kind of happens on a solid front axle here in comparison to CV joints. So right here you have a U joint. Now this axle right here actually spins in the casing like I mentioned earlier. And this is just the axle flange hooked up to a U-joint, which then spins the hub. Now this U-joint right here is a solid piece of metal and the odds of it actually breaking or snapping are very little in comparison to a CV joint. Obviously these can fail too, and uh, at times you will have to replace them. But uh, in my opinion, it's a much, much stronger design over a CV axle. Now the last thing with an independent front suspension system, typically, you're gonna have less wheel articulation than you would with a solid front axle. So for my power wagon, it's beautiful with a solid front axle because it allows those front wheels to articulate quite a bit. Um, with an independent front suspension, there's only a certain amount of articulation each wheel can do. For most people, that's really not gonna be an issue because most people buy these pickup trucks, they're not planning on doing any heavy off-roading. Um, but if you are planning on, let's say, lifting this truck and putting some big tires and, and wanting to do some off-roading, it's a good thing to know that your independent front suspension is going to limit your wheel articulation. So in conclusion about Chevy's front independent suspension, um, I've never really liked it. I just think for a heavy duty truck, I just don't think it's the right application for the job. In terms of a 1500 series truck, Absolutely, and you can see that because every single um, big three truck manufacturer, their 1500 lineups come with an independent front suspension because in that series of truck, you're gonna value ride comfort probably more than actual durability and strength of the truck. But in a 2500 series or 3500 series, in my opinion, you should be valuing more strength over ride comfort. And I think that a solid front axle is a much stronger option. That's just my opinion. All right, so behind this beautiful Duramax, we have this 10-speed Allison transmission. This is completely separate than the 10-speed Allison transmission in the 1500 series as well as the SUVs. This is a 100% different unit. Now, like I mentioned when I was down underneath the truck, the 10 speed in this heavy duty unit is different than the 10 speeds that are in the 1500 series as well as the SUVs. Those 10 speeds were built uh, in coordination with Ford and then obviously approved by Allison. Same thing with these heavy duty 10 speeds. GM um, engineered and produced the 10 speed and then Allison gave it their stamp of approval. So it's technically not 100% an Allison transmission. So one thing I like about this Allison transmission is the fact that it can lock up the torque converter in first gear right as you take off. Now, for someone who doesn't really understand automatic transmissions, which I assume is like 90% of people watching this video, that probably went right over your head. So let me try and just briefly explain what I mean by that. So in a automatic transmission, you have what's called a torque converter. There is a turbine and an impeller. And basically what happens is a turbine spins through fluid, it actually spins the impeller. So it's actually a fluid coupler. There's no actual mechanical coupling other than the fluid spinning. What can happen when a vehicle is under load with a torque converter is the fluid in there is gonna get really, really, really hot and that can just cause a bunch of problems. So what Allison or GM has done and Allison has approved is they have done had the ability to lock up the torque converter so there actually is a mechanical connection and so this is going to really limit any damage to your torque converter when you're actually pulling a big load i really like that from uh, gm or allison and i think that's a really really good idea now speaking of first gear the first gear ratio on this allison transmission is 4.54 to 1 pretty good reduction there also one to one is actually in seventh gear and then eight nine ten are what's called overdrive gears so in conclusion allison and duramax have always kind of been a good combo when it comes to pickup trucks the allison transmission in the older duramaxes in the early 2000s were basically bulletproof um, those six speeds transmissions were fantastic and i think that's what really ended up driving the popularity of the Duramax is because you knew you were going to get a really, really reliable Allison transmission behind it. Um, something that the Dodge really missed and still misses is a solid six speed transmission behind its engine, the Cummins. Now with the 10 speed, it's a little bit disheartening that Allison didn't actually make it themselves and instead they just approved it. Now this 10 speed debuted in 2020 and since its debut, there have been some complaints, some issues specifically in regards to the torque converter, 
but with the later models, uh, 2022, it seems like those have been or tried to be resolved. Um, so only time will tell, but as I can say right now, the Allison 10 speed does seem like a solid unit and hopefully um, will give you guys lots of life. All right, moving back from the transmission there, we are moving to the transfer case. Now this is a Magna transfer case. It has a low ratio of 2.68 to one, basically meaning when you're in low range, you're gonna have a reduction of 2.68 to one. This is also going to have the four wheel drive auto option because it is a clutch pack transfer case, which I don't necessarily like. And I'll tell you why I don't necessarily like clutch pack transfer cases. I would like to see on a heavy duty application, um, either a gear on gear driven transfer case, or at least a chain driven transfer case, usually much stronger and uh, much more durable and will give you a much better lifespan. The manufacturer itself, Magna, calls this an active transfer case, basically meaning it takes a lot of signals from different components in the trucks and it will make its own decision whether or not to engage the clutches or not. Um, and I'll read you something from the manufacturer. An active transfer case has the ability to monitor feedback from wheel speed sensors, traction control, anti-lock braking, and stability control systems, and other inputs such as yawn, steering angle, and the ability to engage internal clutches and send power to the front axle as needed. And that's right from the manufacturer. So basically what this is telling you is the truck is gonna make its own decision whether or not to send power to the front axle or not, based upon whether it feels like it's safe or not to, to send power to the front axle. Now Magna, the transfer case manufacturer, does go on to say when the transfer case isn't four high, the clutches are 100% locked and the power will be split 50-50 no matter what. And I guess I can believe that, but at the end of the day, I don't know how strong those clutches are. Clutches will wear over time, whereas a gear on gear system or a chain driven traditional transfer case, yes, there will be some wear, but overall it'll be a much stronger unit. And especially with these heavy duty trucks, like you do want a strong unit because who knows what's going to be behind the truck when you're in four wheel drive. Last thing you want is those clutch packs slipping when you need that traction. Now behind the transfer case, finally we have the rear end here. This is an 11.5 inch rear end with the famous notorious G80 locker from GM. I actually really like that unit and I'll explain why. What I also wanna talk about is the gearing in here, specifically the gearing that has to come with the Duramax and uh, why I don't like the gearing. So let's talk about it. So first of all, let's talk about the G80 locker in the rear differential. I personally like these lockers. It is 100% uh, maintenance free as well as automatic. So basically what's gonna happen is they are flyweights internally in the differential. And once it detects one wheel slippage, those flyweights kind of fly out and it locks the carrier as a full unit. And now this is a true locker. When this is engaged, it is a true locker. It is not a limited slip. And that's what I really like about it. So it's an automatic true locker. And uh, I had one on my old 96 Chevrolet um, truck. So it has been around for a long time. It's a tried and true method. It works really well. There is one downside of it though this locker can't be abused. If you're planning on doing burnouts on high friction uh, surfaces like dry pavement, it is going to blow up. You're gonna implode it. If you're on, let's say snow or in some mud, a low um, friction surface, it's gonna work just fine. I had over 400,000 kilometers on my 96 Chev and the G80 locker still worked fine. So you can get longevity out of it. You just can't really abuse it. So I really, really like that Chev puts that on basically every single heavy duty unit. It's a really, really good feature. It just really helps improve the off-road capability. And when you're driving around town in the crap that we were driving in today, it's just nice because you don't really have to put the truck in four wheel drive. You can just let the truck drive in two wheel drive and you just have so much more traction out of the rear end. Despite me really liking the G80 option with these heavy duty trucks, what I don't like is the gearing options or better yet the lack of gearing options. So. This truck right now, if you wanted to buy it with the Duramax, you have one gearing option, and that is 342 gears. That is the only gearing option you can get with this truck, not only with a 2500, but also with a 3500, which to me is a little bit odd. I don't know why GM wanted to do that. Um, you know, for example, 
the Dodge 2500 Cummins comes standard with 373 gears, which is kind of a good mix between fuel economy and towing, but you can also option with 410 gears, which is a really good gear for towing. So I like what Dodge did there. If you want more of a fuel economy gear, you can get it standard. If you actually plan on towing with the truck, you can actually get a really good towing gear. 342 gears, in my opinion, is a fuel economy gear. It is not a towing gear. And so I was a little confused by this, so I dug in a little deeper. GM apparently says because they have the new Allison 10 speed in this truck, that is apparently gonna make up the lack of gearing in the um, rear ends here, but I just don't see it. I feel like they're leaving a lot on the table in terms of performance. And I think the towing numbers tells everything we need to know because a Ram 2500 with a Cummins can tow over 20,000 pounds when equipped with 410 gears. Um, this truck as it sits right now, or I guess a Chevy 2500, can tow a max of only 18,500 pounds thereabout. So a Dodge can tow 2,000 pounds more than this Chevy, despite having 60 pound feet of torque less than this engine. So this Duramax has 910 pound feet of torque stock, a Ram 2500 with the standard output Cummins engine, which is the only engine you can get in a Ram 2500, has 850. So it's got less power, but it can tow 2,000 pounds more. The reason is, is because the gearing. And so it just, I just don't understand why Chevy would not give an, at least an option for higher gearing, because I think that would make a big difference in terms of performance, acceleration, and towing. So not sure why they did that. All right, guys. So. I've given you my opinion on the Duramax engine in the first part of this little mini series. And now I've given you my opinion on the mechanical options of this truck and basically what makes it different from the other uh, two big manufacturers. As always guys, I'd love to hear your comments. What do you guys think about this truck? I think it's kind of cool. I like it. Would I buy it over a Ram 2500 Cummins? Probably not, but I'm probably also very biased because I just seem to like Ram trucks. So, you know, take my opinion with a grain of salt, if you will. Um, but as always, like I said, let me know what you guys think. Um, love reading your comments. But if you did like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe. We got a bunch of cool stuff planned, um, but enough of me. We'll see you in the next freaking video.